Hello YouTube, D. Baudry here. Uh, I've already partly taken this apart because, uh, well, you don't need to see me take screws out. So this is a Dualtron Mini Motor throttle. They normally have that little hook coming out here, which I've already carved off, and I'll show that in a minute. You know, and here's your three buttons you have and your LCD and stuff. So on the underside, you have three screws here and one here that you take out, and then this back cover comes right off and you are, whoops, that should have stayed here because that would have been, if this was actually assembled, this would have been retained right there. Um, when it come off at the back. Anyway, uh, inside here there is a single screw and it goes into that hole right there and this retains the board. So it hooks over here and then otherwise it's trapped underneath this disc which is the mechanical part of the hook throttle. So let's talk about this real quick and I'll get back to that. So there's two things about this that uh, you're going to want to remove. And the first one is, there's this spot right here and it had this little curved magnet glued down in it. And then molded into plastic was like a little rectangle around the magnet just to hold it in place. So you want to carve that off because it's in your way. And of course take off the magnet. On the other side, which is this kind of bodged up spot, that's where the you know the hook was and you again you can just carve that off and get that out of your way because it's you know no longer needed and then you're left with essentially this disc okay inside here uh, there is normally a spring and you just push these three little clips out and then this whole piece will come off you can remove that spring there's grease inside there you can clean all that up too because it's no longer needed but uh, yeah you probably ought to remove all that stuff and then your your little outer ring here will spin freely and you know you could put like a couple dots of super glue in there to keep this from turning so what I'm going to do with this is you know now that I've cut those parts off of there this will go back in here let me just stick it in the top cover here so you know if it's like that it's kind of yeah, ugly but if I rotate it around like that now you can't see any of that stuff it kind of looks a lot prettier so now it's a delete for the hook right and it's just this disc inside there with just this little bit of a shoulder which I can't do anything about but that looks a heck of a lot better and the trigger is totally gone but uh, yeah just just turn it and super glue it down in a few places and that should stay put you're never gonna be moving this ever again so who cares alright so uh, let's talk about uh, the next piece oh so uh, if you don't have this in there the uh, board is not retained so it's held in right there by that disc and otherwise you can see me you know like I'm pushing the buttons you can see the board lift out so you definitely need that disc in there you know to retain the board otherwise the board falls out in your hand <laughs> so yeah you kinda need that disc so you're gonna have to cut this up a little bit to make this uh, trigger delete happen alright I have already pulled out the hall but right there there's three little holes and right here let me grab a pair of tweezers so I can have this little bugger so here is the SS 49 E Hall used to be there and it went just like that soldered into those three holes so I just unsoldered it pulled it out and that was done cleared out the holes with some um, uh, solder wick or I used a solder sucker whichever works for you so you can get to the holes cleared out again so you can resolder something else in there like new wires or a connector anyway uh, a hall like this one you know this is this is a, a linear hall rather than a digital hall so it produces a voltage range whereas a digital hall like what's in motors they just produce a, an on off you know basically 5 volts or ground but it's not quite those extremes so you can see on here that there is an angled face and there is a flat face so the angled face is the sensing face and the flat face is the back side and all these halls I don't care if it's in a motor or not they all work pretty much the same way um, you you place a magnet next to them and it causes the output pin to change in some way with the case of linear halls uh, they produce a voltage range rather than just an on off so uh, if uh, and I forget about the 49E specifically it's exceedingly common just about all of your uh, hall throttles use them um, but uh, let's pretend that uh, when it has a south pole next to it then it outputs its lowest voltage which is probably something like uh, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volts something like that so let's pretend like this end of this magnet is the south pole 
let's pretend like that end of the magnet is the North Pole. So right here, it's going to pull the hull down to, like I said, about like 0.6 volts, 0.7 volts. About in the middle, the north and the south faces of the magnet are balancing out, so then it's going to put out about its median voltage, which is about 2.4, 2.5 volts, something like that. And then when the north pole is around to the hull, then it's going to output its maximum, which is something about like 4 volts, 4.1 volts, 4.2 volts, something like that. And all you're really doing when you're pulling the throttle is you are rotating a magnet from south to north in front of the hull. That's it. And then the output leg on the hull changes its voltage based on the position of the magnet. This is, this is literally the two key components in every hull throttle on the planet. <laughs> There is nothing else of importance <laughs> other than some mechanism to make a magnet move past a hull. Uh, that's it. This is the critical details that tells your controller throttle position. All right, so having said that, uh, you have the exact same thing happening here. So this is my replacement throttle that I'm going to use. You know, it's a thumb throttle. So you know, there's a pivot point, which is around that screw right there. And then the hull is about like right there, and then there's another little curved magnet right there. And when I pull this down, all I'm doing is causing that little magnet to rotate past the hull. That's it. <laughs> no rocket science in here. Those three wires are literally exactly the same as three legs on that little guy. Oh, come on, camera, focus. Yeah, there we go. Exactly the same as the three legs on that hull. No difference whatsoever. They're just simply brought out into a cable rather than being legs on a part. So on here, uh, the kind folks that make throttles tend to do this. You'll have a black wire, red wire, and like a green, yellow, or in this case, a white wire. So red is plus five volts, or oops, red is plus five volts, black is ground, and then this one's got a white wire, and that's gonna be your signal wire. So that's exactly the same on here. And here is a little baggie full of more SS49Es that I bought from like DigiKey or Mauser. And you can see pins are labeled 1, 2, and 3, and 1 is 5 volts, 2 is ground, and 3 is your signal out. So here's the physical hull, and let me grab my tweezers again, and hold that, there we go. And that used to sit right there in the board. And in fact, on the board, on its silk screen, it even has which way the hull faced out. So in case you forget, don't worry, it's silk screened right on there. And of course, it's the angle side that faces the magnet that's in the mechanical part, right? So now you know what the legs are. One is five volts, two is ground, and three is, is the signal out. And that's exactly the same that's in here. You know, red is five volts, black is ground, and the white wire is the signal out. Let me grab a pokey thing, so I'll spoocher. So that would mean that this leftmost hole is 5 volts, the middle one is ground, and the rightmost one is signal out. So you're going to solder these in, or like in my case, I have a JST 1.0 connector. Uh, the 1.0 doesn't mean version 1, it means the spacing of the pins, 1 millimeter. So a little tiny bugger, but this is exactly, probably can't show this because, you know, Nobody can really see this because it's really tiny, right? Oh, I lost the hull. There it is. <laughs> it's stuck to my finger. There we go. So uh, the legs on the hull and the legs on the connector had the exact same one millimeter spacing. So that connector will slide right into the three solder holes that the hull was in. And now I have a connector right here that the... Uh, external throttle will plug into. And again, this will get a JST female connector crimped onto that. That will plug in right there. And if for whatever reason I decide I don't like this throttle, I find something better, I want to switch to a twist throttle, all I have to do is unplug and plug in and I'm good to go. So let me talk about one other little detail. So this JST male connector right here is the signal cable that goes down to the controller and the rest of the EV you know for like enable and all that stuff so uh, again you know when you take the throttle off of your Dualtron scooter you'll take the back cover off you'll see the connector pull that bad boy out don't pull it by the wires because you might break them off pull it by the connector pull that out because it is possibly secured by Solastic like this is so just pull that out and then you'll have this whole thing free and in your hands and then you can work on it as you wish but yeah you're gonna 
flip the board over because the hull was soldered in on this side right here. So you'll put some solder on there, you know, put your soldering on there, pull the hull out, and then it'll be clear. And then you can use some solder wick or a solder sucker to suck the holes clean. And then once that's done, you can either solder your wires in directly, or you can put like a JST 1.0 connector in there. And then you can plug in as you wish. And that's pretty much it. Once it's all done, you'll see your LCD has probably got fingerprints all over it. So clean that up with a little bit of alcohol or glass cleaner on a clean paper towel. Otherwise, you'll be looking at that through the uh, plastic. And again, if you touch the inside of this, which it looks like I have, <laughs> then uh, do the same thing there. Yeah, clean that up too, because otherwise you'll be looking at your fingerprints all the time. And I don't know about you, but that's irritating. And it wasn't that way when I started. But uh, that's all there is to it. So then after that, the, uh, the board is going to have a little connector in there. Drop that back in, just like that. Drops right in. I mean, it goes in really nice. You're going to put this piece back in. Uh, there's that screw that goes down inside there. There we go. There's the right place. Put that screw in. That's going to retain all this. Um, you're going to want to cut some little channel somewhere to bring the wires out for your throttle. So you can plug that in. You'll plug that in. Uh, then you will put the back cover back on. Well, I guess you won't. You'll plug in your, uh, your uh, main cable back to the scooter into there. And then you'll put the back cover on and put all your screws back in and you're done. This will work exactly like the internal throttle does, you know, the, tr the hook throttle throttle does, except for now you'll have an external twist or in my case a thumb throttle that will work exactly the same. That's pretty much all there is to it.